Hello, good evening, Josh. Hi, guys, how's it going? Um, we're all right. How are you? <laughs> I've been better. I've been better. <laughs> I, I can imagine it's been um, a bit of a rough few days, um, I suppose. Um, but uh, hey-ho, we'll talk about it all, uh, including uh, all the good bits as well, the race wins, podiums, and the uh, uh, when the bike was good, etc. Uh, we will get into that. But first, I suppose, obviously, we have to ask you, first of all, um, about what's been going on at uh, OMG Racing. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's obviously, you know, everybody's, everybody knows now that um, myself and OMG Racing are part of the company. Uh, you know, it's unfor- very unfortunate. You know, it's not something of, you know, I, start, I started the year, you know, we're all uh, very happy with everything and, and never expected this for this to happen, really. You know, it's, it's, it's very disappointing and, and, you know, unfortunate, but, you know, that's where we are now. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, things just got... Uh, Things just sort of took a turn for the worst. Um, I suppose after after Cabo Park, uh, going into Alton Park, you know things um, things changed a lot, and uh, yeah, and, and here we are now. So very unfortunate, um, but what can you do? Uh, these are the reasons we're made, and and that's that really. You know, I uh, just have to focus now on twenty twenty and getting. Getting a good team uh, around me and and a competitive bike and and you know showing what I can do. It's interesting that you say that uh, a few things changed and obviously you're talking about stuff behind the scenes, st- stuff that we don't know about. Um, and uh, <laughs> since since you're on, well, what did go on? Because uh, originally it, it turned out to to be that you you had this um, quote illness. I don't know if that was the case or not, but. Um, well, what 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 actually did lead lead to, to was it was it financial or disagreements no, yeah, in the team or well, something? No, it was, it was nothing. Uh, see, I see. Obviously, a lot of people um, a lot of people don't know what's been going on, uh, and then you see a lot of things online. Um, you know, people thinking it's financial. Uh, well, that would be the obvious you know, wasn't. thing to think about, wouldn't it? I mean, because because you're well, a race I'll, winner. I'll, yeah. No, that was that was never the issue. Um, you know, I wasn't I wasn't paying for the for to be sat there. Um, you know, OMG. You know, they do. They were very nice to me. They, they gave me a, a good contract uh, and you know, good bonuses as well. So you know, there's no, there was no issue there. Um, it was really just uh, yes, we had great success at round one, and then just sort of one thing after another. You know, we we. A few things go wrong, and and uh, suffered from technical issues that that weren't really uh, sorted out or, or dealt with, and just one round led into another uh, with the same issues. Um, and you know, I suppose me being a rookie in the class, uh, and it was it was sort of tough to be um, to sort of say, you know, I I my view that what was wrong with the bike and. And everything else, and and I think they had their view, uh, whether that be me or something else, you know. And we just sort of butted heads a wee bit, and um, just you know weren't weren't able obviously to sort it out. Uh, they've put recently they've, they've put Billy McConnell on the bike at Open Park, and then put James Ellison on at Ellis or at Assen, and nothing seems to have changed, you know. It, it's so for me, it's it's. It's an issue. It's a technical issue that just hasn't been sorted out. Uh, you can see, you can see Bill Bias, um, the Bill Bias guys. They've been struggling all year, and then all of a sudden, they've found what's what was wrong. Um, gave the confidence back to Bradley Ray, and uh, Luke Stapleford, obviously, <coughs> obviously at um, at Aston. And um, you see what happened. So you know, I think, I think if it was given the time. Uh, given the opportunity to try and try and sort the issue out, um, rather than taking me off the bike and putting somebody else on it, uh, it would have been a lot better. But you know, the decision was made, and I had to just go along with it. Really, I had no other no other option, um, and that's that's basically it. Really. Okay. Did you sorry? Did you never get a chance to try the standard swinging arm in the, in the superbike, Josh? Like Brother Ray's gone back to at Bill Bass. No, not that. Not this year. Um, it is something we. With with thought of, uh, 
and that probably would have been the one thing um, that and, and you know with uh, possibly looking at maybe the engine uh, characteristics and, and the electronics side of things uh, trying to tame the bike down because Suzuki is Suzuki is quite a you know you watch it at certain places like Alton Park um, especially at the start of the year and, and it was a very hard bike to ride around those type of circuits mm. uh, so you just need to try and tame the whole thing down make it rideable um, and I mean, I'm guessing race, race stringer does the engines, doesn't it? So I'm guessing that the engine will be ridiculously powerful and, and very fast. <laughs> but then, I, yeah. from experience from many years ago with, with Ray, I know that it is hard then. You've got to tame the bike down and change electronics. And sometimes he, and this is not being disrespectful to Ray in any way, shape or form, but he wants you yeah. to ride a bike with as much power as it, it's kind of got. And sometimes you need to take that away. So I understand where you were struggling. So. Uh, I know that they, they, they just can't, for whatever reason in BSB, they can't seem to get the chassis working brilliantly on the Suzuki. I know you were on KTX suspension, which will have put you on the back foot to every other Suzuki on the grid, even Bradley's changed to all into uh, I'm guessing yeah. that was your preference to be on, on KTX. But yeah. the, well, we, you know, like even the, anyone's, anyone that's not running the, the uh, Yoshimura swinging arm in, in America works with the Dunlops. But it yeah. seems to be that... Um, if you want to call it a factory swinging arm, even though it's not, it's an FTR or something, isn't it? On there, it just doesn't seem to be able to give you the grip and the confidence that you need, whereas the standard swinging arm does. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, yeah. You know, as you say, the, with the K Tech, you know, we were given the we were given the option. We tested the K Tech. Uh, myself and Luke um, both tested uh, the K Tech and the, the Olins at Cartagena at the end of 2018. Um, I seem to get on with it all right. You know, I said, yeah, it's, it's, it feels good. Uh, we've done some good lap times. Um, Luke, I think he was stepping off a few years of being on Olin's and wanted to, you know, stay on Olin's. So mm. the decision was made to, to have me in the K Tech and then Luke on the Olin's, um, which is hard as well because we, we found out during the year, you know, we couldn't really. The, the data was hard to compare because the Olin's would work differently to the K Tech. Um, and quite quite difficult, you know. As you say, the the Olins, it really is, you know, the world world leader, I think, in, in suspension. Um, you know, you see everybody, you know, uh, at, at the front anyway on the Olins. Um, and obviously the rest, the Bilbius guys, they've moved the Olins this year. So uh, it was difficult, you know, this year uh, when you go to certain tracks and you need that help. Um, you know, it's it's hard because you're the only rider on KTX, so. We, we ran into that difficulty as well, but you know, I wasn't. Uh, at the end of the day, we got it working. We got it working pre-season testing and on, on the first round. Um, but we just found it difficult then to move from circuit to circuit with it. Uh, you know, where other teams, um, where other teams didn't really, and then we, we ran into that problem. Yeah. Do you think you've struggled with that? Maybe a bit of a lack of development. Whereas the the Ducati's moved on. They've been through God knows how many swing arms. I know that T Tommy Bridewell's only changed the once, but. I'm quite sure that PBM have gone through five or six different swinging arms. Um, the Kawasaki's come on leaps and bounds in, in the hands of Danny Buck, and I know that Quattro Plant are struggling slightly with it still, but it seems that a lot of bikes have moved on from where you were at Rem 1. You're saying you had a good feeling at Rem 1 and then struggled a bit yeah. for, for the rest of the year. And, and not not through you being any slower, just the fact that you couldn't move on a step yeah. further like the rest of the teams were around you. Yeah, definitely. You know, as you said, the Ducatis... Um... They, you know, the, the amount of swinging arms they're throwing at it uh, for, they're looking maybe looking for edge grip or better drive grip uh, or whatever, you know, and that, that is the challenge you, you come up against. Uh, and BSB, you know, you got these, um, you know, teams that can throw swinging arms at it, uh, a lot of money, a lot of development. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, just we, uh, like I said, we, we had these technical issues at certain rounds uh, from round two, really. Uh, and we couldn't, we couldn't get it sorted. Um, I was wanting to go testing to try and try and find out rather than testing that track and trying mm -hmm. to sort the problem out. Try and go to a test track or a, you know a test somewhere and, and try and sort it out there. But unfortunately, it just didn't happen. And, and you know, what can you do? Like a, you're going, you're sort of going to a week race weekend, knowing that you're going to run into certain issues. Um, and it was just quite difficult because uh, obviously, like you said, you're up against such such strong competition yeah. in this championship uh, and really good riders. And you know, if you're on the back foot at all, um, it's going to show in your results. And 
you could be half a second off in this championship and be 15th. Uh, and, and, you know, just banging your head against the wall, you know, thinking, what's going on here? And that's just unfortunately the way it was. Mm. Um, well, it's, uh, it, it is certainly good to, uh, to see you, uh, at all, uh, at Donington, uh, where you are, uh, this weekend, presumably having a few meetings, uh, Josh, to uh, see if you can maybe yeah. grab a last minute ride at the end of the season. Uh, that would be good. Uh, I know you, you definitely got a lot of fans who were, uh, crestfallen. I think is the polite way to say uh, when the, when you dropped that news um, the other day. It was yesterday, wasn't it? I think it was Wednesday. Or, yeah. yeah, it was. It wasn't yeah. long ago. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know Liam's had a, a, a bag full of uh, questions as well uh, for you. So uh, uh, if we can keep you on for another few minutes, uh, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah just don't uh, run away, Josh. Yet. <laughs> but I am. Um, yes, away, you, you know why? Get back. <laughs> 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 Michael's running away now that he's got his questions out of the way uh, yeah Josh um, great to have you on tonight uh, thanks so much for coming on but you're in Donington this weekend and presumably you'll be talking to a few teams have you potentially got anything lined up for this weekend yeah naturally you know I'm, uh, I'm here obviously trying to get something sorted um, speaking to uh, speaking to a number of teams as you said and, and um, you know something comes up between I suppose between now and now and uh, this weekend, uh, and, and Brands Hatch, you know, I'd, I'd, um, I'd take the opportunity uh, and, and hopefully get something sorted for 2020. Uh, I know I've got the speed, you know, I haven't, um, I don't doubt myself um, and I know what I can do. So, you know, if the opportunity came about that that was a possibility, then, you know, I'd, I'd jump at it. Because um, at the end of the day, you know, the past two rounds have been difficult, uh, sitting out and um, wanting the ride and being fit the ride, you know, it's been it's been quite tough. Um, and yeah, you know, if I can if I can get on a bike or uh, get the opportunity to ride, I'll I'll definitely take it. Now uh, we know you've had a bit of a strong relationship with Taz and Tycho in the past. They've got Taylor for this weekend, but nothing confirmed for Brands. Are you in talks with them? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I've got I've still got a good relationship with uh, with everybody at Tycho. Um, you know, and, uh, you know they 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 essentially Philip gave me a call in 2017, um, whenever I couldn't get a ride, uh, you know halfway through the year he gave me a call up and, and you know got me on the bike for the rest of the season and uh, I think we won, won at Oldham Park, on a few podiums. So um, yeah, you know speaking to them guys, uh, there's obviously a lot of seats, you know there's a lot of musical chairs sort of happening, um, you know a lot of riders moving and. You know, a lot of riders have been confirmed already. So, you know, you sort of know, you know, what teams are are looking riders uh, and what teams aren't. So, you know, obviously speaking to speaking to Tycho, speaking to a few other teams and whatnot, and, and trying to trying to figure something out really and, and get, you know, get on a good seat for twenty twenty. Looking at the bikes on the grids, um, what what bike would you prefer to be on in terms of your riding style? What one do you think would actually suit it, suit your riding style the best? Um, that's a bit of a tough question. Right? <laughs> naturally, being riding with the Ducatis, uh, that would naturally be, I think, would suit my sort of riding style. Uh, but I suppose in BSB, they're really the bikes are the bikes are you know they're all fairly similar in a way, um, in the way you have to sort of set them up, and then the electronics and everything else. It's not. Sort of like World Sewer Bike, um, where there's quite a difference. Uh, but yeah, the, the Ducati is obviously the one bike following it on track and watching it. Um, you can really see the, the strong points of it, and you can see how you, uh, you're not. Well, it's, it's, it's sort of easier. You can see see in a certain section of the track, it's easier to ride, and um, it's not as sort of violent or, or, or wicked uh, as some of the other four cylinders. Uh, but yeah, probably the Ducati and the BM, I suppose, as well. Okay. I've had a good chance to follow quite a, most of the manufacturers out there this, this year, and, and I've seen the strong points and weak points. And, and you know, the, the the new BM looks really a really strong package, and and um, definitely I definitely think it's going to be you know even stronger next year and the years to come uh, with with more development. So those two bikes are definitely um, the two I'd probably pick to. 
to uh, to say that you know it would suit sort of my style. We know that uh, Michael Haworth is obviously with us tonight. He's looking for a comeback next year. What are the chances of you and him partnering up to maybe start up a team? <laughs> His dad would love it. I'd say what we'll be partnering up on Saturday night if Josh don't get a ride this week. I can imagine Josh, you'd want to get a ride so he can stay at the bar away from him. It'll be a wild one. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think I could be able to keep up, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, uh, I'll definitely have a sore head in the morning. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I don't think it's me you have to worry about. I think it's our Doris. She took me out in Newcastle on Tuesday night, and for a five foot three midget kind of bird, God, she jumped me under the table, boy. I was, uh, <laughs> and the worst part is she called me a southerner, and that's the worst insult you could ever give, but she is from further north than me. Um, but just so you, when you were saying that you've had a chance to follow a lot of the bikes this year, does the the, the, Tommy Brywell seems to struggle a lot with it with the edge grip, and that's why he's gone to the swinging arm he's gone to. Um, yeah. Do the PBM bikes look more stable um, mid corner and corner exit than than Tommy's bike, or do you think it's more uh, just Tommy's style that he's struggling with edge grip? I'm not too sure, especially any time I've followed Tommy. Uh, he's got a very very smooth riding style anyway. You know, I don't. Um, Tommy's probably one of the best riders to, to follow. I think. Uh, I see a, a big comparison between him and um, him and Scott Redden. Uh, Scott's a wee bit more on the edge. Uh, whether that's just because he, he doesn't know the circuits and he, he's pushing, he's pushing quite hard. Uh, but he just seems a wee bit more looser. Um, and then you got Josh Brooks, who's ultra smooth as well. The bike's never really out of line. Uh, but no, it's not. You know, if anything, I would say the edge grip the Jugatis have is a lot is a lot better than what's anybody else has but you know <laughs> yeah. Tommy, yeah. Tommy, do, you think, uh, do you think it's the three riders the cat you've got on the bikes this year that are making the bike look slightly better than it actually is and makes it look further on than it was I mean Sylvain Barrier um, he was on the bricks oh, what was it was it was it what was it the Ducati is he, he, yeah, he wasn't Ducati. anywhere near them was he and I know his bike wasn't just as factory as the as the other slide yeah. but I think yeah. Per personally, and I haven't been to a, to a REM this year, but just from what I've seen on the TV, it does look like Ducati have got the right riders for the job, rather than the yeah. bike being so much more. Like you said before, BSB, you can win on you can win on a different manufacturer. It's not just as critical as, as World Superbike, yeah. but it just seems that Suzuki's not getting dialed in anywhere near as as well as it should be by now. Especially, but I think Brad Brad Ray made it look really good last year and then we've seen him struggle this year so I think everybody yeah. then thought that the Suzuki was a much easier package to ride than it actually is um, yeah, yeah. and of course then everything else has been developed the BMW at the start of the year was with they were they were quite uh, quite a way behind which is not normally yeah. uh, BMW style and the Ducati has been brought on all year like you said so yeah I think you know the, I mean the Kawasaki and Danny Buchan's hands that's come on leaps and bounds yeah. you know? yeah. Danny was I've always, I've always rated Danny, and I wish Danny could get a proper World Superbike ride. I think he, on any machinery, went to World Superbikes in Danny. I think he would take it to Johnny Ray. He would be my vote for the yeah. next British champion in World Superbikes if he gets taken there. But he's going to have to get taken there quite soon because you know Danny's he's young, but he's not that young anymore. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, as you said, you know, I think the three guys on the Ducatis, they're very, very good riders. You know, you know Scott Redden, you know, has come from OGP and. Uh, Tommy, I've always read it, Tommy. Um, anytime I've seen him on track, he's got a great, I think he's got a great style and great, uh, great riding style, yeah, and he's a smooth rider. And I think, obviously, Josh Brooks is British champion, previous British champion, and years of experience in uh, in Britain as well. So, um, as you said, I think those guys really have, uh, you know, they're, they're probably the three best riders on the Ducatis, um, on the best bike. And you see, you, you see it in the results, really. You know, there's nobody really touching them. Um, there's a few guys, obviously, uh, myself and a few others that have been up there and, I, and I've, been, I've been able to take it to them. But um, I think they've just the finds the find over the year. They've, they've got better and better, and and uh, you know the teams as well. You, you say you know the riders, but the, the, the you know PBM, um, Steve Wilthmore and, and Motor Repeto are. The Oxford uh, Oxford Products Ducati, you know, team. They all, they've all got really good guys around them. Really good teams, lots of experience, and that's obviously as well a, a key factor. 
Um, I know Danny Danny Buchan, you know FS3, good good team as well. Uh, I know they get support of MSS guys, I think as well. So they're all they're all really experienced people and um, they know what they're doing. So you know the, the, they're able to give they're able to give the rider exactly what they want and and uh, understand what it takes to to win. Yeah, but, 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 sorry, sorry, Michael, and you. I believe that um, Danny Buck and Steve, the, the FS3 guys, they're, they're going to, they're the factory team next year, aren't they? Well, the official team. Um, yeah. They've already signed their second ride off, and I believe it's not Leon Aslan. Um, so I think there's, there's there's no doors open there. And then obviously Peter Exton's taking a back foot. I don't know if he's going to run anything next year, but uh, I can't find out who this second rider is going to be at, at FS3, but apparently there's someone has put pen to paper. Let's just look at Josh's smile now. Let's look at his face. <laughs> 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 Do you know anything, Josh? Yeah, that's always a bit um, <laughs> telling. <laughs> I think I think he, I think that smile means he he knows who it is, but he's not probably won't say, will he? No. Uh, that, there's, there's obviously there's rumours there's rumours going around. The panic's unbelievable at the minute. The amount of rumours going around. This rider is riding here. Uh, this writer's saying there. People are talking to these people. It's just, it's it's crazy at the minute. And uh, well, well, half of it is yeah. it, it's true. You know, there's that been that many comings and goings. It's it's literally yeah. it's, it's so difficult to keep up. And uh, I mean, you've brought your leathers yeah. with you uh, to Donington. Hint, hint. If anyone uh, fancies a fallout with their rider, you know, give uh, <laughs> give old Josh a call. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's been pretty crazy. Um, what, why do you think there's so many changes in the championship with riders changing teams <coughs> and other manufacturers just taking other riders? Why do you think there's so much going on in terms of changes? Yeah, yeah, massively. And in a way, obviously, it's exciting and, and brings a bit of drama to to the paddock and whatever. And, uh, but I think, in a way, you know, I think riders need almost more protection in a way uh, with contracts and, and whatever because. It is, but it is pretty crazy. At the end of the day, the team sort of has a lot of the power, um, and whatever they say goes essentially. And it's quite tough on the rider, you know. Yeah, it's it's so strange. Own experience. Know, that, it, that it has got so cutthroat with with yeah. rider changes and stuff. Now, when people get in for what you know sacked for for want of a better word for you know partway through a season, when when you actually look at a timesheet, PSB has never been so close. You know from. Oh, no. Guys yeah. that are in the top twenty, they're they're so close to to, to pole position to, to the guys at the lead. You think that yeah. teams would actually be almost a bit more sympathetic to that rather than it seems to be now that yeah. there's certain teams if you they think you're not cutting the mustard, but you you look at the, the yeah. actual results, you're four tenths off someone. Help me find yeah. four tenths and, and I can get up there rather than pressuring a rider and pressuring him and then and then saying thanks but no thanks. I think and another one of the problems is now People have realised that as soon as we get them to the showdown, they've got three rems to find someone else that they may want to run next yeah. year to give them a chance before they make a decision. Which is so yeah. anyone now that's outside the top six is almost fighting for the job as soon as the yeah. showdown's done. And teams just want to get rid and, and find someone else, don't they? Yeah, exactly. It's it's really is cutthroat, um, and we are riding from year to year. Essentially, you know, you're on a one year contract and. And uh, you're coming this this time of the year where you're, you're trying to find a ride, and, and it is very very difficult because um, obviously you know the sport uh, is quite it's an expensive sport, and um, a lot of these teams you know they're obviously try, still trying to find budget for next year as well and everything else. So uh, it is difficult, but you know um, hopefully you know we can get something sorted uh, between now and Brands Hatch, and uh, and we can be back out there, and that'll be the, that'll be the, the ideal. Situation for myself and and going in into twenty twenty can get on a competitive machine and, and show what I can do. Well, if I, if I do make it back on the grid next year, I'll give you a tour here and there. If you need an anchor, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <no> worst, Michael. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned for further announcements about uh, Michael Howard's um, <laughs> glittering career. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. So to be honest, Josh, um, I was super surprised that you'd even agreed to to come on the show tonight. To to be honest, because uh, I sent Josh a uh, just a speculative message this afternoon. 
to be honest, didn't even think he'd reply. Um, and uh, it was it was so good. They uh, not only replied, he actually turned up and uh, and uh, and answered all our questions. Um, whereas uh, some riders, you know, their heads might get down at this point. I've I've, I've been given the heave ho, and and you'd be sort of you know gone. For, you know, you yeah. keep your head down for for ages. But all credit to you, Josh. You're getting right back out there, back on your bike, hopefully. Yeah, that's it. You know, that'd, be, that'd be a dream uh, to get back out there. And because at the end of the day, like I said, I want to be racing. It's, it's it really has been. It's been a tough few weeks uh, or a month or two. Um, not being racing, going to the racetrack and having to sit and watch uh, when you're fully fully fit and ready to race. It's just <laughs> it's I haven't got words to, to describe how, how awful it's been. But I think we can uh, imagine that's the words. Just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Excellent. Well, good luck in your, uh, let's say, your your, uh, your sales pitch uh, tomorrow uh, at uh, Donington. And uh, the way BSB is right now, you just never know. We could see, I mean, Gino did it um, at uh, Cadwell, um, appeared on a bike, uh, albeit because of, you know, some uh, external thing with uh, with Danny Kent. But uh, you never know. You never know. So good luck. Um, I, I suspect it's not the last uh, it's definitely not the last we'll we'll have uh, seen of you uh, on uh, in BSB uh, at the top level anyway. So uh, e- even if it's not uh, uh, to be for the rest of this year, best of luck uh, in 2020. And thank you for coming on the Superbike Show tonight, Josh. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me.